Yeah, hello guys. Welcome to Moonbound with Ken, the crypto realist. Uh, if you're a first time on our channel or in my channel today, kindly please hit the subscribe and the like button. It will be really much appreciated. Just smash the, the like button and the subscribe button. At least this will help our community grow. But uh, today we'll be talking about the, the trading cost part two. The, I did the part one yesterday and which yesterday or the day before yesterday which I posted where I talked about coin market cap I talked about trading view so today I'll be will be talking about how you can practical example how you can buy um, any cryptocurrency using Binance as a, a case study as an example because Binance seems to be the biggest exchange or not actually seems to be the biggest exchange we have out there so i'll be using binance today as an example as a case study we will be talking about in details how you can buy crypto today what we'll be doing about is we and how to buy crypto uh p2p trading we'll be talking about arbitrage then we'll talk about day trading which is the spot and swing compared to the scalping and uh basic basic knowledge about derivatives futures these are major um ways of earning or major ways of trading on uh, the binance platform that is what we'll be talking about today so um as we proceed um one minute uh, uh one minute as we proceed uh let's head on to to binance and see how we can how we can achieve this one minute okay Okay, one minute. And hmm. I'm not supposed to be this. So now once you sign into your Binance, if you don't have a Binance page, you can just sign up uh and uh you can just sign up and uh, using your you need to get verified also it's advisable you get verified if you really wanna if you really wanna like enjoy the whole services it's uh, binance has got to offer so first of all before we comment um i'm gonna like show you ways which you can um purchase um any crypto be it bitcoin or be it a stable coin uh first you need to go People tend to use their credit card or debit card to buy directly on Binance. But for people in Africa, I don't know other part of Africa, but for Nigeria, I don't think it's applicable or wise because um, that the government stops that. So the best way we tend to purchase is we tend to buy any crypto is using uh, the P2P method. We, the best way is uh, using the P2P method. That is what we tend to use to buy crypto daily. But if you want to, if you're in a country whereby, if you're Nigerian living in Europe or anywhere in the world and you want to buy, you can easily use your debit or credit card if you don't have restrictions over there. You can use your debit card. I'm not going to be doing more about that, but I'm going to be using the P2P method because that is how I tend to buy crypto if I want to buy crypto. So what do I do if I want to buy using P2P? I just go to trade and I go to P2P sorry about guys like yesterday i did a video and i could not i was unable to save it the video i did explained i did a practical example how i was able to purchase um i was able to buy a crypto um a usdt stable coin using p2p method but today i'll just show you an example and how to follow through it uh, the first thing you need to do is you come to your trade and you go to p2p and this is the page that would appear and once this page appears, I'm making this video currently from Nairobi, Kenya. So, and the major form of payment here, apart from cash, uh, like mobile money here is a thing. Like, they really embraced mobile money here. Like, literally, me being in Kenya, living in Kenya, I don't actually, I don't, if, I can't even remember the last time I touched cash. I think the only time I touch cash is when I need to pay my rent, precisely. Like, and that is like maybe once a month. Like I need to like withdraw from the mobile money to cash, then go then I go to the bank and pay into the account of the of the landlord of the apartment. So that is only when I think I touch cash. Any other thing apart from that, my mobile phone is my money here in Nairobi, uh, in Kenya. So I really give very big ups to people in Kenya and people of Nairobi. I really 
I really admire that about you guys. Like they really embrace the cashless system. So many countries out there don't even use mobile money. They still use cash to transact. So uh, we're going to head up to P2P and let's say, for instance, I want to buy a crypto coin. All I need to do, I come to P2P. And first thing I want you all to do before you buy any coin, because I'm not saying people here are not legit, but in the midst of this legit, we have some people who are scammers. So if you're a newbie and you want to purchase and you want to purchase any crypto coin, be it USDT, be it BTC, be it BUSD, be it BNB, be it Ethereum or DAI, and uh, you don't want to fall a victim of scam because sometimes it usually do happen a lot. Not that uh, you don't have legit people here, but just to be on the safe side. Unless you're a professional trader and you feel you want to buy from people who are not verified because sometimes their prices are much more cheaper than people who are verified. So what I need to do now is I go here, I mark this. It only shows people who are verified by Binance. So why you need to do this is because you can see they all have a yellow badge. It simply means these people are not willing to lose the hard work they've done to get to this stage. So they will always deliver when you buy from them. So you see, I went to only merchants. And let's say, for instance, you want a specific amount. Just impute the specific amount you want, the range or the amount you want. Sometimes you don't see because you can see the first person listing here is selling for 500 Kenya shillings, the minimum you can sell. Sometimes if you check here, the first person you see might be 10,000 Kenya shillings. It all depends. So you choose the person you want. And if you notice, this person is more expensive with about extra 12 cents or whatever it is compared to the one compared to this one you see this is 20 so extra 14 cents added so but it's better you buy from someone who is verified to avoid you losing or avoid the story that touched the heart of you being scammed or something so what do you do is once you come to the space you click on buy usdt once you click on buy usdt from this person <clears throat> do i already bought yesterday and i was unable i don't know how i was i could not save that video it deleted but i'm just giving a, uh, an example which is going to explain how you do it once you come here you just put input the amount you want let's say you want whatever amount of Kenyan shillings you want two thousand and the next thing is going to tell you this is the amount you get 17 17 uh 17 USDT for, for 2,000 Kenya shillings. And the next thing you do is you click on buy. I'm not clicking on buy because I don't have need to buy at the moment. So you click on buy. It takes you up to your page whereby uh, the seller would stipulate how they need to, how you want to, how they want their payment to be made. Mostly it's via M-Pesa. And you just click on the M-Pesa impute everybody in kenya understands how the mpesa works so they can pay through that means but if you're not in kenya if you're like in nigeria or any other country you can easily just do a bank transfer and you transfer to the person once you transfer to the person you go and you click um a large seller that you've made payment immediately you send do that so once you do that because every seller has a time frame like this person has a time frame like what this time frame simply means is time frame at which it's going to take them to send you the crypto the crypto you've purchased and uh it's going to take 15 minutes so within that 15 minutes time frame you need to alert the seller so that the seller can know sometimes they put their numbers you call them on the phone and say hey i made a payment have you seen release the coin so that is the process you take and once they release the coin and that is it if you also want to sell it's the same process you come to sell like you want to sell your coin you see people here always click on show merchants verified people then you sell they show you how the like the minimum of what they can buy and you choose the means of payment which you prefer if you want to sell so you can just say safaricom mpesa i mean to say mpesa safaricom and you choose so these are people who are willing to buy your crypto coin so once you click on sell just the same process you did the buy you click on sell uh you once you click on sell you put the amount you want to sell once you put the amount you want to sell 
I already have my means of payment here. You understand? I have my means of payment. So once you do that, and that is just how you do it. I'm sorry I just can't do a live um, purchase now because I did one yesterday. And mistakenly, I lost that video. And it's really, it's, it's just annoying and it's hurting. Like it destabilized me yesterday. So um, that is just the process you need to take when you want to buy any crypto coin or you want to sell any crypto on Binance. And uh, the one I'm going to do a practical, let's say, for instance, you bought on the P2P market, you bought a stable coin because we have three listed stable coins here, which is USDT, BUSD, and DAI. These three are stable coins. Then you have the BTC, you have the BNB, which is a native coin for Binance. And we have the Ethereum. Those are like uh, the native coin for Binance. So how do you, let's say for instance, you buy a stable coin USDT and you want to convert it into, let's say for instance, you want to convert it into, um, you want to convert it into a stable coin. Uh, you want to convert it into a coin you need to like hold. All you need to do is you come on the trade, you click on convert. So, uh, if you want to convert, uh, I'm going to show you how you do it. One minute. Hmm. Oh, first of all, I need to transfer. Let me go to my wallet. Just have a little fun in this wallet. One minute. Okay, I have this, I need my fiat and sport. Um, I have this on my fiat and sport. I think I have some crypto somewhere, not on fiat. I think on my wallet, hold on. Overview, let me see the overview. I think I have over $100 here. One minute. Uh, Okay. Oh, okay. Now I need to transfer this. So, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going like what I'm doing here now is um, I have about thirty-seven dollars I used in making a video yesterday, which I lost. So I'm gonna transfer it back to my funding, so that um, we can understand. All can understand what I'm doing here. One minute, uh, Max. I'm sending from my futures wallet. I'm going to also explain this in details, but I want to start from where you can understand properly. Confirm. Okay. And I'm going to stop this trade. One minute. I'm going to stop this trade. Cancel trade, test trade, cancel, confirm. Yep. Mm. So now I'll go to my wallet overview. So now let me explain this. So what I'm trying to do here, in, uh, what I'm trying to explain here in essence is if you come to, if you come on, 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 Let's say, for instance, you come online and uh, you're trying to, let's say you purchase a coin on P2P market. Once you purchase a coin on P2P market, automatically that coin goes to your funding wallet because you have different segments of wallets. You have the fiat and spot wallet. The fiat and spot wallet is, let's say, for instance, someone who has a Binance account sends you a coin or sends you a crypto. It comes to your fiat and spot wallet. And let's say you trade normally in the fiat and the spot market. Your interest comes on the fiat and spot market. If you buy any coin through the P2P uh, method, it comes on the funding. It comes on the funding wallet. Uh, and if you also... you you, you you trade cross margin cross margins another means of trade i'm not talking about that because i don't do it i only do fiat and spot i do a normal p2p and i do futures 
So it comes to this cross margin wallet, isolated margin wallet, um, USDM. So all these wallets, uh, uh, they all have a separate market space where they operate from. So sometimes you, people don't understand that this happens. So people might send you crypto and you'll be looking for it in your funding wallet and you don't see it. So if you want to see, like this is a new account, if you want to see all um, your all you have, like if you want to see your balance and instead of you being confused to know where that fund went to, all you need to do is you come to this wallet spot and you click on overview. You see, once you click on overview, it shows you your entire wallet and your balance. So this is your wallet and your entire balance. And once you're staking and everything, you find everything written here. You understand? So these are little transactions I've done on this on this platform. 17, 150, 71, 70, $134. All these are transactions I've done because it's not too old wallet. Uh, like it's not... Like it's a new wallet kind of not i don't use it that often but these are transactions i've done on it so far but um so we need to go to the next level now which is talking about uh before we get to i've talked about p2p trading before we talk about arbitrage i'm gonna also explain to you how you can transfer um, um your currency from wallet to wallet so let's say for instance you come to this overview like i explained and you want to send this money here you want to transfer it to another to another wallet what do you do you click on transfer you understand it shows you the wallet where you want to transfer these are the wallets where you can transfer from you click on like let's say i want to transfer from this fiat it's in fiat and spot and i want to transfer it to my funding wallet i come here and i put funding and click on funding and what currency p am i sending usdt you choose Whatever it is you want to send, you choose. And once you choose, you just click on Max, and voila. I have, you see, it has changed. If you watch the overview, it has moved from fiat to funding. So likewise, I can also transfer from funding to cross margin. It's just as easy as that. You click on transfer. You see, it's on, I click on funding. Oh, funding will not appear here. I need to go inside funding. You click on it, you go inside it, and you click on transfer. You see, like that is just it. And let's say I want to toggle, you can see funding is below. You click here to toggle up and down, and I just do max confirm. It's back to my. I've sent everything back to my I've sent everything back to my to my uh fiat and sports wallet. And let's say for instance now I want to convert my USDT to any coin. Let's say okay, I want to convert to BUSD or something. The way you just do it, if you like let's say you buy through P2P uh USDT because it's always advisable whenever you want to buy a coin via P2P do not buy a coin buy a stable coin when you buy a stable coin then you convert on binance so how do i do it let's say i want to convert how do i do it all i need to do is i come here on trade i click on, i click on convert so once i click on convert all i do is um what am i converting to so I'm, let's say i'm converting in between two stable coins i'm gonna use um busd okay so let's say I'm converting all my coin to BUSD Max. And I preview. It's just going to be exactly the same amount. As you can see, all I do is I convert. And automatically I've converted all my USDT to BUSD. So this method is applicable for all other crypto coin. Using a stable coin to convert to either Bitcoin to Ethereum to Binance to BNB, other coin that is how easy you do it. So, if you watch view status, so um, that is just it successful. So, all I do again is I come back to my trade, I go to convert.
and now I want to convert my BUSD back to USDT. I come here, I change BUSD and uh, USDT. And I click on max and I preview conversion. You see? As easy as that and I've converted it back. So that is how you can convert your coins on Binance, how you do it. So um, the next thing now I want to talk about is um, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, what is it called? The next thing I'm going to be talking about now is uh, the arbitrage opportunity on trading the crypto. So the arbitrage, I'll just do a typical example using coin market cap. Now I took this coin because I saw an arbitrage opportunity on it. So I'll just be using this as a form of my explanation for arbitrage. So I want you to check, look down here. Like imagine this coin, the price of this coin at the moment is, um, people ask how do I get here? I did that in my previous video, but I can also do it. Let's say for instance, this is the overview. Once you come, you type Zcash up here. Let's say you just type Zcash. Once you type Zcash, it brings you to this page. And now for you to see um, places where the coin are being sold, you just come to market. And that is how I was able to get here. Now, now this is the arbitrage opportunity I want to talk about. First of all, let me bring out the calculator. So, now... Um, now, I want you to see. Now, look at on gate.io, you can see the price of this coin. One of this coin is 156.67. Now, look, the same coin that is this amount, and it's trading against the USDT on gate.io. This gate.io is similar. It's a platform just like Binance. So, it's 156 to 167. Now, come down. Let me show you something. The same coin on this market to USDC is 173. So now let's do a plus and minus, then I'll explain. 173.92 minus, let's go to get.io, 156.67. One fifty six dot sixty seven. Imagine you see the price difference between just buying one coin. That is what arbitrage simply means. Seventeen dollars point twenty five cents. Let's say okay, if you're gonna spend, there will be like a transaction cost of let's say one dollar, one dollar in between, and uh, one dollar. Let's say okay, between transferring the coin from Gate.io to the 50 what is the name of that platform again the exchange it's called 50x to 50x platform that uh maybe a transaction called fee of maybe three or four dollars will be getting will be will be will be will be reducted in between so just doing that alone you've made like 14 or 13 dollars so imagine if you repeat that cycle five times or six times in a day that is you've made almost like 80 to 100 dollars in one day just repeating the cycle so in this situation what i'm trying to explain to you is arbitrage is uh, is is meant to it's is a system whereby you 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 see an you buy a project or you buy a coin from i'm using the crypto scene um, the crypto um i'm using the crypto scenario to make an explanation on this is where you tend to buy a coin from at least uh, a market whereby a more stable market and then you sell it in a, a more an unstable market so if you have the opportunity of buying you have opportunity of being in both markets you understand you can literally buy from an unstable market and sell in a stable market or from a stable market to an unstable market whereby there is a huge difference in price which that now becomes your arbitrage that becomes your 
your your gain from taking such step. So that is a, a typical example of how um, arbitrage is explained, and that is how you can carry out an arbitrage. Uh, then I hope I'll, you you understand better. So there are opportunities which you can arbitrage on a lot of them on on coin market cap. It's just are you willing to do the research? Just go and you research and you check coins and and each and coin and exchanges where they are listed and the price difference in between the exchanges where they are listed and you can just seize the opportunity and make money from it so the next thing i'm going to be talking about now is we're going to hop jump on to the next thing we're going to be talking about is day trading which under day trading we'll be talking about spot swing spot and swing trading and we'll be talking about scalping so um if you People might not understand what spot and swing trading simply means, but I'll just explain uh, a little bit, then I'll show you um, a practical example how it works. So, for example, let's say you uh, spot, spot and swing simply means the same thing. Let's say, for example, you want to get yourself into the scalping, but scalping is for those, like I say, it's for those who can handle stress. Me, I don't scalp. Because you need to make quick decisions, you need to act accordingly. Your time frame influences your trading, what trading style is best for you. Because scalping simply means you trading short time frame in the market. So if you are scalping in a day, you can take like 15, 20, 30 trades. And all you're just doing is trying to get little gains in between the market. Then your gains might be $3, $4, $5, just daily, just taking positions to get socially those amount of gains. So if you put those amount of trades, which 20 or 30 times in a day together, your $2 or $3 or four, depending on the equity you're trading with, depending on the capital you're trading with. So that is what is going to determine the interest you're going to be making. And scalping, people scalp maybe using the futures market or sometimes using the swing market. But the swing, I think it might be a bit slow because when you're trading the swing or the spot market, you're just trading that the market is going on one direction. That's the difference between swing um, swing or spot trading to the um, to the futures. We will be talking about the derivative futures. Spot or swing trading simply means you're trading the market is going on one direction. What do you actually mean? You're, you're trading that the market is going to go up. If the market goes up, that is when you make money. You, 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 if it goes up, you make money, you get out of the market, you wait for it to retrace back, you enter it, you, you, you take it at the bottom again, and you go up. So it simply means buy low, sell high. That is what spot or swing simply means. Why scalping simply means you're just trading the fluctuation of the market. Like you take a look at the market, okay, the market is going to go up. You take a buy. People who do scalping mostly they do it using futures. And when you see the market has gone up and you think it's going to go down, you take a sell. Which I'll be doing a practical example on spot and swing and also using uh, futures to explain scalping also. So the next thing I'm going to be jumping into now is um, talking about um, the, the spot or the swing trading. That is what I'll be talking about at the moment. For one minute. Um, so so now let's head on to spot we we'll go to trade for you to get to your spot you go to trades you come to spot and you go you go on spot that is how you get on your spot market so i'm gonna use bnb as an example so this is how the spot platform use and on this part, you see my mouse hovering. It's simply showing you the trades that have been carried out in the market. This is referred to as the order book. The red people are people who wants to sell. The green people are people who wants to buy. So whenever their prices, these are the prices they are stipulating they want to sell at. These are the prices they are stipulating they want to sell at. So once these prices hit, the, they agree on a price, automatically it comes here. This is where you see the market trades. Now, this is how it's been carried out. So the green are people who have bought, the red are people who have sold. So that is just how it works typically. So um, let's say I want to use BNB, not BTC, as my example here. So now this is how this is a BNB chart and how it looks. Uh, one minute. Uh, 
this was an, what I was doing yesterday, the video I lost, part of the example. So let me just remove this indicator. Moment. Let me do it like this. So now let me explain. Let's say, for instance, you want to like do, uh, you want to take a spot, you want to get into a spot trade, and um, you have your USDT and, and doing using BNB and USDT as a case study. Now, first of all, you need to change and put input the currency pair you want to trade with against your stable coin, which I did that BNB here, and I clicked on BNB USDT, which we have now currently. And I'm just doing a, a rough analysis because before you get into, you need to look for an opportunity. So when I talked about um, buy low, sell high, it simply means look at this position. Let's say, for instance, because this market went from here to this place. So let's say, for instance, when it was here, you took a position. Here, my mouse is hovering. Now you take a position here. Mm -hmm. Once you take a position here and you tell yourself, okay, um, as it's going up, if it comes back here, let it sell automatically. So that was when I used this tool. It's called the price range. So from here, you took a position here. And let's say you, you say sell for me when it gets to this place. No, oh, oh, this is not one minute. This is the wrong tool. That is for if you're going down. So, so let's say you took a position down here, come in, down here, and you want to sell here, depending, you want to sell here. It means look at the percentage you're going to make, 1.34%. Yeah, 1.34% simply, it's a small money if you're using a low capital to trade, but if you're using a huge capital, it's, it's, it's something good. 1% is something good if you're using a large capital to trade. So let's say you, you take a position here and you say you want to sell here. That simply means uh, you're, you're aiming to get. That is, uh, you don't, you don't, that is what, uh, you don't literally know, you don't really mind how long it's going to take to get there because we are on a 15 minutes time frame here. Maybe I should change it to one hour. The 15 minutes is just too short. Okay. So, I think a one hour is a better picture. So, you want to like take a, a trade from here. You took a position around here. It's just an example. Uh, and so, let's say you took a position around here, this level where this, this my mouse is. And you want to sell here. That is about 1.91%, 1, 1 approximately 2%. So if you, that is how you, but I'm not, I'm just doing a rough explanation. That is how you actually um, either swing trade or you usually do a spot trading. So, and uh, let's say you want to take the position and um, you want to, you don't want to be looking at the computer after you've done your technical analysis because you feel the market is going to go that direction. All you need to do is you come here. I can decide to buy um, a, or a limit and a market price. There are two different things. A limit price is you telling, determining the market, determining the amount you want to buy at. Let's say it's you're bargaining. I'll just call a limit like you're bargaining. Let's say you go to a shop or you go to a market and you're told, okay, this thing is sold for $200. Uh, $100. You're like, I don't have $100. Can you make it for $70? Can you make it at 80? That is what a limit simply means. You're literally telling the market, you're bargaining and saying, ah, the market is too high at the moment. I don't want to get into the market at this price. So what you need to do, you, you create, you just create a limit, uh, a limit price. Once you create a limit, but the thing about a limit price is once you create, create a limit price, it's difficult for you to um, create a sell, a sell price. So all you need to do is you create a limit price, uh, but for this um for this um for this um lecture or for this video i'm just gonna use the market price and also create 
a stop limit at the end of it so now i'm gonna use the market price automatically it has choose the market price for me so i want to buy bnb i want to buy all the amount like i want to use unless say, okay i'm gonna use um i'm gonna use 50 percent of my money yeah which is about half of 107 dollars which i have there and i might just okay buy automatically i've entered the market at that amount which i have literally bought the coin now it's not gonna show here it's already in my if you go to my spot wallet you will see i already have bnb what this amount then let's say i want to sell like i want to go out and do my thing and um i don't want to be disturbed i can just click limit like the amount i want to sell at exactly so i just click limit and i can just okay currently the market is at this range the market is at 421 as you can see here this is the price for 421.8 i can decide to say okay when, once it gets to 425 once it gets to 425 once the market goes to 425 once it gets to 425 automatically you sell you understand that is one thing you should do so i click on 425 an amount of bnb the whole bnb i have there which is the 50 percent i bought which is about 5200 percent all i just do is i click on sell bnb so i have told the computer like once it gets to that price sell my sell my bnb look at it sell my bnb you understand i've told it to sell my bnb once it gets to that price once it gets to that price sell my bnb that is what i've literally told the that is what i've literally told that is what i've literally told um binance to do for me but because i don't want to sell i'll just click on cancel so once i click on cancel once i click on cancel once i click on cancel that is just it i confirm because i'm not selling at the moment so all i need to do now because i already bought i'm just using it as an example for this i can just use market price i come here i click on market and i'll just say i'm selling all my bnb all my bnb exactly and i say sell it has already sold automatically my market uh, my my bnb has been sold and my balance look at my balance now is back to 107 that is just how you do it. It's as simple as that. That is what sports and swing training is implementing. You you taking um you 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 get into the market um, after your analysis, you buy low, you sell high, you buy low, you sell high. You're using the, the volatility in the market to to create uh, a, a, an area where you can literally make gains from for yourself so that is just a practical example how you can how you can um trade um spot trading or swing that is just a typical example how it works so we'll be talking about futures next futures is what we'll be talking about next after this uh, so talking about uh futures here i'll just be talking about the fundamentals and how you can navigate um trading uh, the futures market so that is what we'll be discussing here at the moment so now let's head to the future so how do you get to the futures part on binance the you go to once you're on binance um, you head up straight to derivatives you go to derivatives and uh, you go to USD M futures because we have quite M futures, which simply means you're using, um, let's say, you're you're using for USD USD futures. USDT is the base uh, the base coin you need, which you need to own. While for coin M, you need to own either Ethereum or BTC. But we are using USD futures, which is like the most popular, the most popular amongst all. So on USDM futures, um, we would also be the platform looks similar to that of Spot, but a bit different. We'll be using um, BNB as um, our as our example tool. I'll just use it that way. BNB USDT 
BNB USDT perpetual. That is what. And uh, before we comment, if you guys remember very well, you can tell um you can tell um oh one minute one minute i think i have a way of explaining it. oh no 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 a minute okay yeah exactly exactly yeah this is gonna be good for making my example because i remember i left it this way yesterday so we're gonna come down to this um you scroll down if you remember well i have my funds seated in my spot wallet what do i need to do i just click on transfer down here from my fiat and spot max and confirm then all my fund has been shifted to the futures wallet now this is going to enable me to take a trade now you can see my available balance is 107 usdt which is 107 dollars precisely so what do i need to do first of all before we commence i want to explain in details um because i didn't explain that in details uh um scalping daily so look at this um look at this chart if you watch this chart uh and it's on a three minutes time frame look at where my mouse is on a three minutes time time frame so people who scalp daily scalp for this you see this difference this little little difference that is what people who scalp on a daily do they look for opportunity like this they take positions i'm not a scalper so i can i'm just on making you understand what scalping simply means they you see the small time difference these are what people who scalp tend to they use for scalping but and they have um, indicators and tools which they use because they don't just jump into the market but they think they, they trade time, um, short time frames like this three minutes five minutes ten minutes these are the short time frames people who scalp as professionals on a daily do but so imagine when you're taking these short trade short trades within five ten fifteen minutes in a day you can take 20 10 15 30 trades in one day while for sports like i said earlier it's just you do your analysis and you take a position you can leave it and go to whatever you want to do once the market hits the spot you want it to hit automatically you've made some money so and um now we're going to be talking about futures which in futures like uh the difference now between futures and the and the spot trading is in futures you actually do not own the currency peer you're trading like for instance now you see i'm trading bnb usdt i do not own bnb but I own USDT. So if I'm making money, I am only predicting the future price of BNB in this trade. I am either saying the price of BNB will go up to a certain amount or it will go down to a certain amount. And if I predict it's going to go up to a certain amount, it simply means I've made money because that was what I have predicted. If I predict, if I predict it's going to go up and it goes down, I am losing money. If I predict, so in futures, you are literally losing your money and you're literally getting your money. You can call it gambling, you can call it high risk. But at the end of the day, it's very lucrative if you actually know what you're doing. Uh, but while for sports, sports is just traded one way. You need to own that coin which you're trading. If it's BNB you're trading, you need to own that BNB. Then you can then predict the price is going to go up. So once it goes up, then it can sell to a stable coin for you and you've made money. Then maybe you wait for it to come back down, then you can buy at a low price then also um, um, enter the market and say you feel it's going to go up. So that is how you trade spot. So now let's, um, just like I explained, uh, here, this is the other book. These are the red simply means people who are selling. The green simply means people who are buying. And the trades, so whenever the the price a seller has stated and the price and the, seller, um, uh, uh, the price a buyer has stated and the price a seller has stated matches, that is when you get this amount and that is when you sh it shows here this here my mouse is showing that it means a trade has been carried out you see it that they, they reach an agreement and then automatically it fills here so now i'm gonna show you step by step um if you want to trade futures what you need to do first of all you need to come to you choose the currency pair which i did bnb and once you're done choosing that the next thing you should go is always come here in this spot, uh, let's say for instance, you see I have like a $107 balance here. 
which I'm supposed to use to take a trade. And uh, if you're a beginner or a newbie trading futures, always use the isolated. I'm going to explain the difference between cross and isolated. For cross, cross simply means um, when you're taking a trade, let's say since I have $107 here and I decided to take a trade with $50 and I use cross, let's say the trade starts going against me and the $50 I used in taking that trade is exhausted and I still have like $57 left, automatically if I'm on cross, in order to keep me in the market, in order to keep me in the market, the, 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 the computer or Binance itself, the program, Binance program itself, goes to my goes to my um to my cross wallet to my to my balance i mean to say to my balance and starts taking money from the remaining 57 dollars which i have there so if uh let's say i did not set a stop loss if the market does not hit my stop loss and i'm going at a loss automatically i'll get liquidated so which means my money is going to be over so um cross is left for people who are professionals to me uh, who who are willing to take huge risk. But for me, I don't do cross. I do isolated. So isolated simply means, let's say I'm using $50. The, that $50 is what the system is going to use. The system is not going to touch whatever balance I have left. If I if the trade goes against me, it does not hit my stop loss. It, it doesn't hit my stop loss and my $50 is over. So be it. That means I'm willing to lose $50. So when you're trading isolated, it simply means the amount which you've used to enter a trade is what you're willing to lose but once you're using cross the amount with which you use in starting a trade is not what you're willing to use because the the system keeps taking money from your balance till there's no more money there before you get liquidated so that is just the difference between um the cross and isolated so for this i'm going to be using isolated and i'm going to click on confirm so how do i get into the the market at the moment so the next thing i need to do now is um the next thing i need to do after i click on on um on isolated is choosing a leverage so and you're advised also not to use high leverage the higher the leverage you use in in the futures market the higher the the the, 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 the higher it is for you to get liquidated so it's advisable to use if you're not a professional use between the 3x leverage you see i'm using here you use between 3x to maybe 15 or 20x however you want to take the risk but this is a tutorial video so i'm just going to use 3x for this tutorial so i'm using 3x to make this example so what is the next thing i want to do okay let's say i want to use maybe half of my equity here which is a 50 percent of it i choose 50 percent you can see it has written 50 percent so currently the price uh this is a take profit and stop loss which you can also use um which you can also use to also help yourself and uh like to the the take profit and stop loss what it actually do is it it you state when you want to make uh when you want to leave the market and you it also helps you take your profit so in essence what i'm trying to explain is you if you want to take futures your take profit and stop loss is very important because once you impute a stake a, a take profit price it simply means when the market gets to that price be it if it's a, a long or a short position a long position simply means you're predicting the market is going up a short position simply means or a sell short simply means you're predicting the market is going to go down so be it a long or a short position uh if you, you take profit and stop loss is the, like the most important thing you need to have you need to you need to impute because it's going to help you um it's going to help you uh it's going to help you limit the risk in the market because the market is very volatile so if it hits a certain price automatically the system takes your profit and you're out of the trade if it hits your stop loss automatically the system takes you out of the market but now you are the loss that is just it. If it hits the profit, you have the profit. If it hits the loss, which is if it goes against you, it hits the loss, you have the loss. So now I'm just going to do a rough, just taking a rough to show you how it works. So I'm using the market price, which is 421. As you can see, it's a market. So I'm just going to do take profit at, um, let's say 425. 425. And uh, stop loss, 410. Let me use 410. 415 yeah 
I plot for 15. What do I do? I'm buying long. I might just say, okay, buy long. Automatically, you can see it has been filled. So you see, see, I'm already at loss of 0 0.09 cents because I did not do an analysis and I'm buying long. I got in market price, which I got in was 421795. My liquidation price is 283. Margin ratio is uh, 1.95 the amount i use in getting in is 53 usdt as you can see here so let's say you want to do what we call trailing stop loss like you want to um like you want to tell yourself okay uh i want to follow this market as it's going but in as much as it's going up i want to be taking profit gradually out of it so this is a system we call trailing stop loss all you need to do is you come here you you demarcate this your 53 dollars here which automatically is no longer 53 dollar because I'm using 3x. This $53 has been turned to 53 times 3. That is what I'm getting to the market with now at the moment. Because, um, well, let me show you. One minute. With 53 times 3, which is what I am getting into the market with. Because um, 3x, that 3x you see, the 3x leverage you see is multiplying the capital or the equity I'm using to get into the market by 3. So now it is 53 by 3. That is what I am trading with, which is, look at it here, 160. 160 USDT. That is just, you see where the mouse is hovering? 3x is equals to 160. That is the size I am in the market with. So my percentage will be within that, that price. So what is the next thing I need to do? Uh, since if I want to like do a trading stop loss, I come here, you click on 50%. And once I click on 50%, uh, let's just say, since I choose 425, I might just say, I choose 425, I might change it to 423. And I click on limit. Automatically, my first take profits, my limit one is 423. Once the market get to 423, I'm in profit. You understand? That is, it will take away 50% of my equity. That is, half of this money I have here will go out with the profit will go out of the market because it has hitting my take profit one then if i want to also change it i can say okay my take profit two is 425 with 50 percent of my equity the remainder of my equity and i click on limit see i have gotten the take profit two so you see i have to take profit here at 423 and 425 with 50 percent each of my equity so it's a strategy people use is quarterly stop loss. Like they don't want to like lose or let, let's just be getting it gradually, gradually and grow from there. So it's a strategy people use once they are in the market. And another thing again, I wish for you to understand is uh, the way features, features is made is let's say for instance, since I am using 3X, which made my money to be 160. Um, all I'm projecting is if the market goes 1%, automatically i have made three percent because i am using 3x leverage if the market goes two percent automatically i've made six percent so it is for 5x if i'm using a 5x to also trade if the market goes one percent the direction i have said it should go automatically i have made five percent you understand if the market goes two percent automatically i have made ten percent so that is how futures is being calculated i'm just giving a basic and a a basic and a basic understanding how everything works but since i did not do a technical analysis for this i'm just willing to take a loss here all i need to do is because i have made i've set the market to take profit one and profit two all i need to do is just hit on the market and it's going to take me out of the market so i hit market automatically it has sold on the market it has sold so i got out of the market now so this is how uh one tend to navigate around the futures um the platform there's not much it's not there's nothing hard about it because so many people see these lines and these things all around and they feel confusing it's not that confusing if you put your mind to it in a day and you're good you can be able to navigate and go around it so at this um this stage i wish to end this video and i i i believe you've been able to learn one or two things today and kindly i would wish you to hit the like and the subscribe button and uh thank you all for watching and see you next time god bless